we can zoom. All right, Jeff, we were going to strategize a bit with the Russians. When we left off, we were having a discussion about what to do with this singular clear weather turn in the midst of all this mud and what the mischief the Soviets might be capable of. We left ourselves a note right here. Attack this hex at all hazard. And that's this hex where these two six fours reside in a trench. Then it's uh, the airplanes, yes? Yep, it's all airplane right. time. Let's, uh, let's see what's happening in the Soviet air display. Well, it's clear weather. And like every other like every other type of weather for the Soviets, that's the same thing. So they got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and five is twenty-two. So they can do eleven. Eleven guys. Um now Jeff, I think the most important thing is probably to Well, are we're gonna throw everything we have in that attack in front of Moscow, right? So we're going to need at least some ground attack to help with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ground attack, we'll put a red lightning bolt. That'll cover the red side of the strike dice. So if we roll a red lightning bolt, we got it covered. And uh, do you just want a white lightning bolt on the other one? or? Oh, we can't have, we can have a red and a, and a white together. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so that's two of 11. Um, they have an air strength of three. Do we want to give them some fighter cover? Do they, no. Well, the Germans might rush for cover. Who knows? Yeah, they might. Um, I, there's no, you know, we can see if the Germans don't rush for cover, then we have the fighters up for protecting ourselves against their strikes. That's true. So, yeah, we should put up a fighter, or put up a good fighter. Okay, that's three of 11. Um, I think we want to okay. mend this one good bomber that we have. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So that's yeah. four of 11. Um, and let's put another strike group together. Well, we could make an airdrop. We could drop paratroops. Oh, could we drop paratroops? On, you, can you drop them on a woods hex? Sure. You can drop them anywhere. Drop them anywhere. Really? You can drop them on that woods hex. Well, let's drop the paratroopers on there. Can we... Bomb it and drop paratroopers on them? Yes, you can do uh, two sure. missions as long as they're different. All right, All right. Let's, uh, let's drop paratroopers. So that's let's one, two, three, four, let's five push. of 11. Uh, we should probably protect that bomber with an escort. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Let's take the good escort with us. Mm -hmm. That's six of 11. Oh, wow. But what? Okay, the bomber is what do they think? <clears throat> yeah, that thing's not with it. So okay, so that's I push the other two P thirty nines because I just want to even if you don't use them, you have them available for defensive support and you know, we've got that great big gigantic night bomber thing. The IO four, yeah. yeah. Okay, well if we take the two P thirty nines, that's a good deal. That's eight of eleven. You wanna make a long range bombing raid? Yeah, let's that, try that out. That's 9 of 11, and he'll make a night attack. So he doesn't yeah. even need an escort. But you might Can give he, him a friend. Yeah. yeah, could we give him a friend? Push an SB2 up to help him. Now, is if he attacks by himself, what is his role by himself with the two bomb things? He bombs his bomb strength, too. Yeah, no, he's he's a hard hitter. If you can hit he, something with the nine hexes, you can do it at half range, and so a double bomb load, that thing can deliver four. Okay, there's there's one more airplane we can bring up. Do we want to bring up another fighter to be ready for their turn? Or... Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Another fighter. Too. So that is our 11 guys that we can bring up. Oh, that's very nice. And... Yeah, we got a we got a strike packet hitting in front of Moscow. We got a night bombing mission. We've got an airdrop mission, and we've got some spares in case the uh, the Axis get frisky. Yeah, this is very good. Okay. Very well, good. that aside, now the Axis have got to consider their options. If we look at the Axis display, their fuel is five and a half fuel points. 
So five and a half fuel points, if they want to rush recover any airplanes in the air box, do they? Do they want their red lightning bolt guy, for example? Um, I don't know. If, if I were the Axis, I just might put up a couple of fighters and intercept one of these missions. The, yeah, I think it's just a couple of one point nines. <clears throat> yeah, that, I, I wouldn't put up any more than two. Okay, so two 109 fighters are going to pair up probably hit the uh, paratroop mission or the strike mission in front of Moscow. So that's going to cost two German fuel points. One, two. Can, can the Germans really afford that, you think? Well, it's clear weather. they got to do something. What do you think, Lance? Do you think that maybe they should just stay grounded? Uh, it's either send nothing or send two. I mean, sending single mission uh, interceptors is... Right. No, I'm thinking of sending nothing. I mean, is that an option here? I mean, is there anything that looks like it's going to be a critical threat to the Germans? No. No, I don't think that... The, I don't see this... That, that's critical to the Soviets. Yeah, but I agree. The Germans, I, I think if I were the Germans right now, I'd save the fuel. You're going to want it when you yeah. your summer offensive. Yeah, I, let's save the fuel. Cause okay. My thought, my thought on that is, I can understand why it's critical to the Soviets to budge that hex, but we're not planning to take Moscow. At least that's not our thinking at the moment. Okay. And if we do take Moscow, we're going to take it by flanking, but we're planning to go to the south. So. Well, then one more. If if we're not going to raise any German fighters through rush recovery, and all we have is this Romanian up here, um, do we want to fix the Stukas in case it's clear weather again next turn? Or do we just let no. God and time sort no. those out? It's it's a it's four four you know it's a four rolls on a six sided dice are going to be mud so no. <laughs> Ken Ken posts a note saying Hitler says you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well Hitler's got to find more fuel for the Wehrmacht. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, okay, so we're not spending any fuel. we're not spending any Axis fuel then, right? No rush recovery. Right. I think. I think that's best. I think Hitler will be happy with us later when he finds that we actually have fuel to run the air force. Future Hitler will like us, is what you're saying. The future Hitler, yeah. The existing Hitler may be chewing the carpet, but... Yeah. <laughs> Pre present Hitler is having a cow, but future Hitler. Yeah. Okay, so this yeah. is for future Hitler. There we go. Um, so that's the Axis part of the air units. Uh, we look at the Soviet reserves and check those out. This guy moves up into available. And these guys count down. We've got paratroopers ticking down the clock. We got one ready to drop and two getting ready. Not bad. You know, we should probably prepare another transport plane so we can do a, a, a two airdrops on one turn if we want. That's something to think about. Yeah, that can you do a double airdrop in the same text? No. No, you can't. That, uh, um, the, the, the rule is one. If you have a card that lets you do that, that's something different, but there are none in Thunder and Dice. So let's move this over here. Where do you think two improved position markers will help you? Uh, I think in front of Moscow, man. <clears throat> yeah, I think the Woods Hex where the 28th Army is would be good. In front of um, Moscow? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the 28th Army in the woods. Really hold on to that. And then, of course, the town there. Uh, is that the Osmond? Right. No, that's not the Osmond. Mosaic. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. There, we strengthened the position in front of Moscow is a good idea. Right. I'm, I'm totally good with that. Okay. And now for personnel points, we have... Okay. Soviets are bleeding personnel points. We have one offensive point in the bank. And now it's time to put a headquarters in attack supply. And I guess that's going to be Moscow, yes? Yeah, it's going to be Moscow. So we spend our one offensive point. All right. Moscow or bust. Wow, it was a lot nicer when we were getting like 10 steps a turn, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was pretty cool. Of course, we were running pell-mell and getting them killed. 
We'd get 10 on the board and we'd lose 8. That was pretty bad. All right. So now it is the special movement. Then, of course, Mosca. the odds, Mosca. Now, we need to try to get, we had it figured, didn't we, with the, with the cores, uh, with the tank cores on it. We'd have 22 and 6 is 28. 12. What can, we can't get 36 there, can we? Hold on, hold on. You, you're not seeing it. There's 12, right? So we move him here. Mm -hmm. That's 11. Check. Okay, on top of this eight, we can put. I was going to say you can move the guard cavalry from that spot. Well, we could. Uh, so yeah. that's another 11. So yeah, there's 11, 22. 11 is 22, plus six for the tank, and two more is 30. Yeah, it's not going to be more than. It's only going to. Be a, a raw two to one with the two, so it's going to be a one to one attack basically. Um. Well. Yeah, and then you hammer it up to. Right. We've got two shifts from the headquarters, so we can make it a two to one. Okay. So one to one goes up to three to two, two to one, with the two headquarters shifts. So that's using both headquarters right. shifts, right? Right. Using both of them, and then we do the parrot drop and the other airstrike on it. So this one is getting a double shift from the headquarters. Then you want to throw in the paratroops. Yeah. So here's the paratroops. We'll attack this hex at all hazards. Yeah, we're doing it. I feel like we're nagging ourselves. Okay, that is a night airdrop. It could be a night, or you could do it during the day. Uh, definitely at night. It's, it's much harder for him to intercept. Where's the reserves? Reserves. Okay, this paratroop is... Dropping, this guy is making an airdrop mission. Airdrop. Okay. Given given what they have fighter-wise, though, you could put up your uh, three-point escort and they'd be zero. He's 40 with it. Or the Yak. He's going to, if, if he puts this fighter up, it's going to be minus two because it's a night mission. Well, but, but a night mission, you get less uh, shifts from the... Airborne. You do? Why is that? Well, because it's night. That's the night rule. I think uh, mm -hmm. you only get, uh, I can't remember, it's one or two surprise shifts rather than the potential of three. I thought it was a minus one. Yeah. So You're, I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, this pull pull that night. rule out of your hat and show me because I don't, I think paratroops always drop at night. Uh, no, not always. Yeah. It is it is dangerous. It is it is a little bit more dangerous to drop at night. Man, I saw the longest day. You drop at night. <laughs> that was a pretty dangerous and and outrageously dangerous drop. Yeah, in the uh, woods at night. At night, they they lost a lot of guys. Oh, that was just snow or something to really miss. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the the night rules are. Uh oh. Now Kevin is our resident rules lawyer. Just so you know, Kevin Roust, rules lawyer. I can not copy the rules lawyer. But that we ought to be under the uh, surprise by paradrop, and that's been modified now. Non night capable transports. Oh, that's this is a night capable transport. Excuse yep. me. Hello, come in. Night capable okay, transport. They'll hit it at minus two, but which becomes minus one because of the people. So that's fine. If they want a minus one, they can have a minus one. What what bad thing can happen to us on the minus one table? They could roll a six. Well, if we uh, if we escort it, isn't it? Isn't it the same difference? You can't escort a night mission. Well, I mean, drop them during the day. Isn't if, that an option? Drop them during the day, we'd be at a zero defense against their two. So no, no, not if it's escorted. Two, so we'd be at a zero. 
Well, he's saying if we make this a day mission. Forties escorted with the P forties during the day. Right. The P forty is three minus one for vulnerable makes it two, and the Romanian little thing hits it for two. And forget it. Then he's rolling on the zero column. They'd be at a zero during the day or on the zero column. If he rolls a five or six, he'll get an abort, and we won't drop the airplane. If we, uh, if we fly at night, he has to roll a six instead of a five or six. Let's fly at night and make his job tougher. All right. It makes the paratroops less effective. Though. No, it doesn't. it doesn't. Because Alan recognized this is a night transport. That's right. Because this guy is, is night capable. He can drop paratroopers at night. He can find his way in uh, the dark. Okay. You know, okay. <laughs> it's like... Comrade, right. out. Got, Just they, jump. Right. He, got he, out. Okay, he knows good. the drill. Good. All right. So we, uh, all right. I think, I, if I remember right, the, the Soviet transports are almost all night capable. The German ones are not. Which is fine. At least when we're playing the Soviets, it's fine. Okay, so we're leaving everybody else. Well, you know, we don't need this 645 here. We could... We could Evacuate that guy and still have our odds. You know that. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. So Let's put him in the reserve. Um, can he attack anything while he's out here? You, you want to hit this? Well, hit, hit, hit which one? They got an eight defense. I guess we can get a two to one. Yeah, let's put him in the reserve. Yeah, let's put him in the reserve. We'll go one, two, three, plus one is four. And that's, that, a, that's an attack headquarters. Oh, shit. I'll just leave him in Moscow for now. All right. He's going to hang out in Moscow. It's a party. Party with Stalin. Party with Stalin. Okay. Yeah. It, it. Now, going up, we have Moscow and we have the two to one. You want to do the two to one? You got to do the. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do the two to one. I'll roll that. Okay, now, what lance? We got to do what first? No, the parent drop. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. The, the parent drop goes the same time as that battle. Oh, okay. That's yeah, good. we're doing the battle against the 57th Panzer, right? Yes, this is the. Yeah. This guy is a 2 to 1. Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a D6 with 2 CS. I'm rolling that. So here goes. Ground combat. We got all those dice. This is so much fun. Here goes 1, 2, 3, bang. Okay, two to one. Now that was a pretty good result. Um, we have okay. So we have we have no armor in this attack. Okay, somebody's going to be shot. So we don't get a shift for that. But an airplane we could take a hit on, and that's this guy, and that'll give us a shift. So the two to one will go up to a three to one, and then the result is five exchange. Oh, I love it. We just. Dinged another Panzer step. Gosh, we're killing their tanks. Okay, yeah, this... but the Germans get to choose. Well, first the, the Germans only have one unit. The Soviets are yeah, going to pick Germans this guy. The Soviet casual. Yeah. So the Soviet casualty is going to be who? Uh, I think maybe the sh the uh, shock, the shock. horse, or the guards. No, the guards get a. Get, come back for half a step. Don't hit the guards. Let's just hit the shock army. Okay. Shock army flips. And now the Germans got to retreat two and spaces they, by the Soviets. They do. No, by yeah, the I guess by the Germans on an exchange. Oh, the, the Germans, Germans retreat retreated. their own guys on an exchange? Yeah. Oh, yeah, by the defending yeah. player. Okay, well. I'll keep them right on the on the rail line. On the rail in the woods. Okay. Yeah, Do we yeah, want to advance? Uh, no. Yeah, I think I think that no. we can we can always pull back, but um, we have to think about it. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna pull back okay. behind the river anyway, that's fine. But you know, with the mud coming, I would just dare them to to shoot back. I would advance and be a pain in the ass. This is like Operation Pain in the Ass. Yeah, well, well we, we can change our mind, but it, it might be mud. But I, you know, I don't want to get people too outrageous. But 
yeah, I mean, we'll let's think about it. If we have them there, we have the option to do something really nuts with them. So yeah, to push them further forward. But if you yeah. if you were thinking about abandoning everything on that side of the river, you don't want to advance them because you can't get off home. Right. Well, I think I think uh, you know you know what I I don't like advancing them. Pull them back and let's just get back across the river. Oh my goodness! Everything. What happened yeah. to that brave general who was? I, I, I totally agree. Oh, no, you guys! I, I don't think there's anything to be gained by pushing across this river. I think that if we get out of position, they're just going to kill Russian scouts. Stalin and will have you shot for sounding like grandmothers. You're you're a bunch of babushkas, not advancing. <laughs> yeah, well, Stalin did have the bad habit of ordering senseless attacks that killed a lot of people so badly that. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it's I think consolidating because we're going to need those troops. We're going to need to suck troops out of that front if we can. To the south, oh, like man, yeah. you just, all you got to do is smite the ground and more Soviets appear. It's, it's. <laughs> no. All right. Oh, we're running out of people. All right. Now we got this German bulge here in front of Moscow that's got to get dealt with. So our raw odds with two shifts from the headquarters, we're you throwing all our stuff at this, is two to one. And I guess we got to roll for the paratroops. Oh, wait a minute. Do the paratroops create more factors? Oh, we forgot about that. Let's see. Well, we wouldn't have made it to 36, 16, no matter what. We would not have enough for 22, 26. Yeah, you could all, even only. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't have made it. I had a or, I mean, you're around 30. Okay, no problem. We're barely making it to 30, yeah. I mean, two more steps is not going to make it. Okay, so these guys yeah, drop. Perfect. Here they come. Woohoo! And uh, now we got to roll to see if they get any surprise. Yep. Okay. okay, Jeff, who's rolling for the surprise? We'll roll for the surprise. Who will? I will. Uh oh, okay. That's a surprise. Yeah. One, two, or three. Yeah. Some ships. You need a three. I thought it would be a, a four. Four. The Germans saw them coming. Yep. That's too bad. Four, five, or six is no surprise is. ships. Okay, so this has no done its thing. And we'll send those guys home. At least they're not shot up. Now here we do have tanks. Here we do have tanks. And we, have we have tanks, tanks and we have two red lightning bolts coming at them. So we get a die roll plus two go. strike support. Okay, but here's the roll. One, two, three, bang. Okay, so two to one. Both shifts three come through. Three to one, four to one, deuce. Four to one, deuce. Defender pressed. All right, well, that's going to bleed a step off him at least, right? Or are they going to run and preserve their, their strength? As the German player, I will, will take the step loss to hold that. Okay, well, you're going to take another step loss for the paratroop. Because the paratroop is going to exchange itself away. Well, we lose two steps if we stay. Basically, you'd end up flipping a boat. Yeah, but you're going to kill the paratroop. Because it cannot oh exist God. in this hex with you. So it's going to exchange away if another we, step. If we, if we, if we uh, retreat, then we don't lose any steps. But no. The, but the Soviets get a breakthrough. Because they landed a paratroop, they'll get a breakthrough. Well, that's okay. Let's just re let's, We get to take the retreat with the defender press, we do. Yeah. Yes. So let's just go straight down the rail line and get the bug the heck out. Because... Two infantry steps, that's too hard of a loss. Well, it's... I'm sorry, What's Lance? That? I said I would definitely be happy with that if, if I was a Russian. Yeah, killing two German yeah, steps? Well, I, I would not. I, I just, two German steps is too ridiculous as the German. I, okay. They, they give the stupid hex away. So one, it, two. It, it, it's, it's great to give up a step and frustrate the Russians, but, one of them but giving up left. two... One of those guys is flipped from what? Oh, no, he doesn't. You're right. He no, doesn't. Yeah, they don't have to. Okay, so now this is a breakthrough? Yeah, I didn't realize the parents were going to break the bloody, you know, result. All right, we're going to advance this guy in. 
And if we advance this guy in, he can go an extra hex, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then he can't get back any further than that, that 9,900. Why do you want to do that? I'm just looking. We're, We're just gonna get I'm browsing, okay? Let me browse. Um, well, I mean, you know, he could go there and sit on a rail line and be a nuisance, but... No, yeah, well... Yeah. All right, well, then we'll leave him back here. Let's advance the 3-4, then. Yeah. So that's that's, that's what it's going to look like. Yeah, no, it's, it's what our, our purpose was to relieve Moscow of this dangerous position. The Germans sitting two hexes outside. Yeah, you've done that. Well. Yeah, well, if the yeah, Germans, yeah, we've done it, so. the Germans didn't need to bleed two two steps to hold that hex. You're right. No, well, it was too. It made it too costly for them to stay, so they left. And the paratroop made the difference. Yeah. Yeah, the paratrooper made the difference. So that that worked out as far as from the Russian point of view. That's really good because now we've got a the woods hex. We can fortify it and make Moscow more secure from the front. So, Kevin, when this guy checks supply at the beginning of the German turn, he'll flip back over, right? He the, can. The paratroop. Okay. He can flip over, right. not must. Right. Well. And that's a place where you might think about keeping him in that mode because he doesn't count for stacking. He doesn't count for stacking? You mean we could advance this guy in here as well? Yep. Well. Hmm. Well, wait a minute. Instead of advancing him, why don't we advance this guy in and get a real beefy dude in there? And then move the eight up to there. Yeah. Yeah. Things are happening here. Okay. That's that's our breakthrough advance. He doesn't count for stacking. That's right. He's yeah, just. And I mean, what what's going on here is when when the paratroop when the airborne unit drops, it drops as a marker, not as a unit. It doesn't have its full, you know, all of its material and stuff like that. Right. So it's just the unit. It doesn't take. Up when does it? Be, when does it become a unit? It, it, in what? When you check supply, if he's in supply, the Soviet player can decide whether or not to turn him back into a unit. Yeah. Otherwise, until, he's an immobile yeah. marker with the two defense. I, there's no reason to stack all those in there, by the way. Well, I mean, it looks very impressive to me. Yeah, I think that the guard should st stay back here. That's, <gasps> that's fine the way it is. You're such a babushka. Um, All right. Then it's time to... Uh, right. Okay, Jeff, let's do the regular movement phase. You want to start up north? Yeah. yeah, there's really... We can flip everybody around. You know, looking at the, the position along the Volga between the two reservoirs, I think we should just stay where we're at. Just stay right there. Uh, given the success that we had below, um, you know, maybe we we might hold out for another push if it's mud, since the German Panzers got wrecked. Um, maybe we've got some opportunities. Um, in fact, you know, what we might do is we might, um, maybe what we should do is put that uh, tank unit and go one, two, three, four, and put the tank unit on top of them. Well, he's got to stop so in this hex because of an Ezoc. Oh, there's an Ezoc. Yeah, Is there any guys. way he can, he can, one, two, three, oh yeah, okay. That's fine. We'll just leave him there. But that, that you see, he could get into there, and we could have him help next time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... We might have some interesting possibilities on that front. We can do some finding um, and grinding. Yeah, it's, so I think that is a good idea to keep it alive. So we just keep these people all right here where they are. And, uh, whoops, I just did that wrong. And, uh, you know, the, these groups, they could just go back to right face up. And, of course, uh, these guys here should stay where they are. Now, Oops, should they? How can that happen? He can't, he can't get that many factors against this hex. We don't need a five and a four. No, no, I know that. Um, Should I we know put that, this guy forward? The thing is, is that there... Well, we, we, yeah, you could put him forward, yeah. Um, because this guy here can go right there. Right. And, uh, 
Yeah, and that that seems to be where I would counterattack if I were the Soviets. So yeah, it was a fairly strong advance. And then you could try. Let's see, you get the paratrooper here. You could. I don't know if you want to sacrifice this. Are you kidding? Maybe. Yeah. Hell I'm yes, I'm for sacrificing more. anything. Um, if, if I you... make a suggestion. Yeah. Sure, Lance. One thing is, I would try to put the guard cavalry and that tank corps back somewhere where they're not right on the front line, so you can combine well, them into a cab mech group. Well, we have cab mech groups, but the yeah, trouble is they're so big they can't, can't attack. We don't have we have every cab mech group we can have on the board. Oh, you already right have them. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's let's check. No, there's um, one left that can so, be built. Uh, what I was thinking, this place bothers me because it's got that super panzer army sitting next to it. So it's got it's fortified. If we keep these two guards in here, we've got a defense of 15, which is quite formidable for holding that clear terrain hex. We've got the double shift on the hex below did here. Did you forget, did the Germans want to deploy reserves? Uh, I no, they don't. Uh, they only have that stupid Italian motor thing, and there's no reason to move it. That's true. This is the only available reserve. It's the Italian motor. Yeah, you, you need to yeah, check it just to be sure. I I did already while you guys were talking. I looked at it and I shook my head. Okay. And I didn't. I I didn't yeah, want to interrupt your breakthrough going on. You just you know, it's there's no critical thing going on here. Um, and then uh. I think that this is a strong straight line in front of Moscow. I think it looks good. We've put the, the true German troops are pinned up against Ivankovo Reservoir. I think they've got to bug out now, which is going to give us another forest tax. Um, it's good. I like it. Um, and probably the, the second uh, should stay there to defend Moscow because we've got just a fortified marker there in case of a breakthrough. Um, now, it gets more complicated further south we go. That's true. Uh, one, one thing, I, I don't want the Germans to squirrel into this hex here. And I, one thing I'm thinking of is putting these guys in here. I mean, they do have a shift. They would probably be seven defense, hopefully. Um, and Defense. they've got a ship. Not a one, so. one. Yeah, I don't think the odds are good. And we can fortify it. And then we could turn that mystery meat into a half-strength army as soon as we get a chance. If we get a chance. And then this one, if we get a chance. And that one, look at the river protects this guy and from three sides. He's got a ship, the 11th. Um, now it gets a little more dicey out here. But he's out of supply. Except for the tank army. Yeah, well, if we stick him here, the tank army can't reach him. This guy can go one, two, three. Yeah, he can't be reached he can't out reach there. Him. He can't be reached. So and he's behind a river. Hold on a second. Let me put him right. Yeah. He's by a river. He's here. He's very mobile. And if we want, we can take this. Actually, this, a cavalry unit. I was going to say, he can reach this hex. If he breaks this down into two... Twelve nine sixes. He can get one each in ninety nine forty two and ninety nine forty three. So he could hit that with twenty four points to six. Yeah. Uh huh. If it's clear well, weather. He also, he also could hit Arrel with that same twenty four. Yeah, he could hit Arrel as well. Well, that's that would um, be twenty four you know, to ten though. And the cab doesn't help. This guy reaching up six. There, I think yeah. everybody's. I think the Russians have accounted pretty well for themselves during the winter. Yep. They really have held the line all winter long. They just yep. don't have much beyond this line. Yeah. Well, the Germans, the German Panzers, not only is their infantry beat up, but their Panzers are really beat up. Oh my God. I think they've got six or seven Panzer steps. To make up for it. You know, and this yep. is really interesting, I, I guess it's the discussion phase, because if the Germans do anything offensive in the clear weather, you know, the Soviet, their Air Force's job, since they have so much fuel, they can like put their whole Air Force back in the air now if they want. Um, yeah. 
their job is to to find out where the German tanks are attacking and try and exchange them away. And to make a German tank attack, even though it's clear weather right now, expensive. Uh, and then the Soviets get a clear weather turn, and I wouldn't be surprised that they are prowling around looking for the odd panzer that they can jump in the clear weather. Again, just to bleed away those tank steps. Well, the, 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 the problem for the Germans is they can break a hole. The problem is, is that they can't, if they go through that hole, they're, they're sticking their head in a noose now. It's not quite as easy as it was in 41. Mm -hmm. They have to break the front altogether. They've got to just break it wide open. And they've got to break it in a way that it, you know, the, the Russians lack mobile reserves uh, right now. And that's what really prevents them from reacting. Well, but if the Russians are building up their reserve now, look, I mean, they've got an army coming into it. They're going to have a whole bunch of tanks. Um, you know, maybe they'll be strong enough to be able to react. This part around Tula is very vulnerable once you break out because you're threatening Moscow from the south. So you're putting the Russians on the horns of a dilemma because now they're going to wonder, are you going to turn north? Are you going to, you know, and always keeping a, a couple of panzers in reserve in case, hey, maybe we want to try the canal again, or I mean the, the Volga between the reservoirs again. Um, you know, just to threaten them, to keep them from pulling everything back. Yeah. Um, the Russians have done this before. They did this before, and we weren't, as the German players, we weren't flexible enough. Uh, Alan always preaches reserves, reserves, and Alan is right, of course. Uh, that we ended up having to do our south offensive without panzers um, because the Russians just simply shifted everything to the south and went north because they didn't feel a threat from panzers in the south. I think if we do it right, if we position the panzers right, and Alan's point about having them distributed up and down the front is a, is, should be, um, should be uh, thought through, should be accepted. It, as it a, makes as the Soviets deal. very respectful of sticking their little noses out because well, it, and for it, the Soviets also to strip some part of the front there to, to counter us um, because that's what they did that's how they saved Moscow they were able to strip the south because we had no panzers in the south of course we had a problem in the south they had the Dnieper line clear up to Kiev and we really couldn't have any meaningful threat to them there that's why we pulled